Welcome to the Running Refresh Podcast, where hot takes and debates on the sport of running are more than welcome in the studio and for the good of the sport. Running Refresh is hosted by Logan Lummel and his refreshing guests. Welcome to the Running Refresh Podcast. I am joined by Stephanie Purple Brokaw. <laughs> My first female guest, professional runner, technically one of my coaches. That's right. 201 in the 800, faster than my roommate Olin, might I add. <laughs> uh, he was on the episode zero. Uh, 406.7 in the 1500, which mm-hmm. converts to about a 425 in the full mile about. Uh, 10 times U.S. championship qualifier from 09 to 18. Eight times first team All-American. Won an NCA title in the DMR. Uh, is there anything I missed? Trey likes to say that I should have told him that I was cross country freshman of the year in SEC. Okay. I don't think that's that big of a deal, but he's like, we need to put that in your bio. So yeah. that's the only thing, maybe. What are your alma maters? Um, or where where you, where'd you go to college? Where'd you go to high school? Okay. Where are you from? Gotcha. So I'm from Downs, Illinois. It's like two hours east of Macomb. And I went to high school at Tri-Valley. So a small school. We were 1A. Um, and then I went to University of Arkansas after that. So, And then I spent all my time there. I didn't transfer or anything. Yeah. But I have went and volunteer assistant coached at many schools afterwards. Yeah. Like Western Illinois. Current. Western Illinois. <laughs> it's the best one. <laughs> so I'm your host, Logan Lummel, future teacher and coach. And I'm just looking to provide some unique perspectives on running, starting with the lovely people I know in Macomb. Um, you know, just looking at different levels, backgrounds and interests. Hopefully going to get into, you know, Stephanie's background as a professional runner um, and her collegiate experience. Uh, if you think you have something unique to add to the podcast, just hit me up at Running Refresh on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube, and give the podcast a like, follow, and review if you're listening on a podcast like Apple or Spotify. It really helps it out a lot. And just to start, so you're into photography. Mm-hmm. Um, so what type of photography do you do? Uh, when did you start your photography career? Actually, I got my camera, my first one, when I was a kid. But then when I got older, I think it was my junior year of college that I asked for a camera for Christmas. And my dad was like, okay, that's a pretty good idea. And then so I was doing senior pictures and engagements in Arkansas until I moved away. So around 2014 to 2016. And then I pretty much just didn't take many pictures from then on yeah. until more recently. Um, I just like picked it back up and thought now that we've grounded ourselves in one spot and I'm not moving mm-hmm. around every year, I thought it would be a good time to actually start doing like senior pictures, weddings, engagements, and of course, some team stuff with the running mm-hmm. and um, I actually don't love doing the sports photography. I like all the candids around the meet, but I do like using the photos to make graphics. So it's a kind of catch 22. I have to do them so that I can make the graphics yeah. and post it on the Instagram and whatnot. Yeah. So who's your client base right now or how have you been finding clients recently? Or Originally, I just went on the interweb of Facebook and just said, Hey, I'll do some free engagement shoots. I'm trying to build my portfolio because all my stuff was from earlier in mm-hmm. 2015 and 16. You've probably and things, gotten a lot better. Yeah. Things since. have changed too. <laughs> like the editing style, what people want And you wouldn't think it would change that much, but it, it really has. Yeah. Like, of course there's still like kind of the same concept photos, but the way people want them to look as a whole is so much different. So I kind of had to like start over and I started with just some free engagement shoots and then it took off from there. Um, And now I'm getting decently steady like clients. Where can they find you on social media? How can they contact you? So my photography is snapshot Steph, one word, and then my Instagram is the same in, as my website. So it's yeah. also snapshotsteph.com. 
and all my information's on there. It's really easy. My phone number is on there, my yeah. email, everything. So, yeah, you, yeah, it's pretty easy to find me. Although you don't like sports photography, you've already done some great work. <laughs> the limited times you've, you know, been able to take pictures at practice, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and then you're also into cooking. Uh, yes. So when did you start taking cooking more seriously? I, Would you say? I always have been into cooking since I was younger. My dad's actually the cook at my house. And so my iron got low in high school and we found out. And so then I started eating steak a lot. Yeah. And... I would make my own steak for lunch and dinner. <laughs> like I'd make it at one time and then almost every day, which is, I wouldn't recommend, but, yeah. but it really helped to get my iron back to a normal level. And so I always enjoyed cooking. And then of course, as soon as I moved out of the dorms, my sophomore year in college, it was just like game on. I just cooked a lot, but I didn't make my chef Instagram page, which I don't update as much as I should <laughs> now that I'm doing the photography. It's yeah. just it's too, many, too, side it's too many Instagrams, honestly. <laughs> and once I made that was like, I think it was 2017 that I started that. I used to post a lot of my stories and people would just say, just make a food gram mm -hmm. and get it over with. So I finally did. <laughs> so did you mainly learn your culinary skills just through trial and error or... Um... Was it someone in your life? Yeah, I guess I didn't learn that much. I just, I always say, people say they can't cook. Uh -huh. And I say, well, can you read? Because they give you <laughs> instructions. And then once you've done enough recipes, yeah. you know, you just kind of go with the flow or change a few things when it's, you know, meant like when you think something creative. So mm -hmm. I don't know that I like specifically learned. I don't remember anyone like setting me down and teaching me. I just watched my parents or my dad and then I did it so true yeah and then how important is like nutrition in running I would say it's super important but it's not as like crazy rigid as I think people assume I mean anytime I'm looking at pizza someone's like can you eat that? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, well, yes, of course I can eat it. I'm not going to eat the whole pizza, but you know, <laughs> I might, yeah, right. you burn a little more <laughs> calories than me. I mean, it's amazing how much food this kid eats. Cause I do the food ordering for the team and you eat more than anyone, I think. Yeah. So, but yeah, I would say it's good to be consistent. I think that's the most important thing For sure. and to not just mix it up right before you race or your big time so even if it's consistently bad by the time you're racing you know a big at least championship, your body's used to it. yes yeah <laughs> so i actually learned that the first time i heard that was from um ruben reyna and so he actually owns the footlocker record still and he is one of my college teammates dad from arkansas went to arkansas but i remember him saying and he's an olympian two time and he said that just eat consistently even if it's consistently bad so i've always kind of just kept that with me i'm like all right well he knew what he was talking <laughs> sounds about like he some sounds good like something yeah, right <laughs> more than i know <laughs> yeah and then i mean how much of your ingredients now are you getting from because you live on a farm right now uh like kind of yeah a little hobby farm yeah uh how much your ingredients now or what do you get from your farm from well trey is he we do get a lot of like corn and beans from trey's farm and whatnot so we do use that when we get it but and then we had zucchini and a lot of watermelon so last year um so anytime I get those ingredients, I just use them as much as possible. But I still go to the grocery store and fork over the cash for the yeah. <laughs> for the good ingredients because it does cost a little bit more when you're going like a completely healthy route. And I I do buy some frozen vegetables just because it gets so intense in cost to yeah. always buy fresh. Um, I buy a lot of frozen stuff because especially <laughs> like at well, as a college student, but it just says like one person like yeah it's hard I, to use it all like i can't use all that fresh stuff all the time so i right have a lot of frozen food fruit and veggies yeah it's right. smart. and then you've already mentioned it a little bit so um you come from a smaller school mm -hmm. kind of a smaller town but you're near is that like near bloomington yes yeah so not like there's like the, people around right you still. it's not like a 
middle of nowhere completely yeah. yeah town so like being from a small town how did you originally get into running okay and so your, your school yeah no well yes so my brother <laughs> he actually ran and he was like pretty bad at it just because he had asthma he worked hard and actually became decent to where i think his 5k was seventeen thirty ish or something which is not anything amazing but he had pretty severe asthma, but he was running, I think, to kind of avoid baseball yeah. um, and do a sport, which my dad is like really into our sports. And so my brother is just not quite the competitive person I am. So he just didn't want to do something that was really super competitive and was more social. So he was doing like 5Ks and my dad asked if I wanted to go and I wanted to do anything my brother was doing. So even if it meant watching him play video games, so I would do anything. And I went with him, I think with basketball shoes were my first two 5Ks and I ran like 23 minutes wow. when I was 10 in basketball shoes. And then the top girl in Illinois, dad, younger sister that's hard to follow but they saw me running and told my dad to get me a pair of running shoes and not look back and so <laughs> here we are <laughs> we're yeah. still running and then yeah. you also were pretty serious with soccer so when yes. did that start slash end yeah so that's funny because the only reason I knew that dad was from soccer I was playing with his with his youngest daughter on the club team. So that started when I was, I guess, in third grade, I started playing. And then in fourth grade, I started club. So, and I played up and I was mm -hmm. a runt. So it was kind of funny that I just, I was way smaller yeah. than everybody else. But what kind of club were you playing at? Were you having to travel or was it pretty near? Yeah. So it was in Bloomington okay. area. So they started up CIS, Central Illinois Select, and then um, I think they changed names eventually, but I would guest play a lot too. Uh -huh. So I ended up traveling a whole bunch during that time. And then I also started playing for a St. Louis team, which was crazy because I would yeah. drive down there like twice a week in the summer, for sure. which is two and a half hours. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, but, I drove like an hour to play, but yeah, I mean, a lot people, Kids are doing it all across the country. For I know soccer. it's no big shakes these days, yeah. but back then it was back probably then, that's yeah right because you had to get up on your dial-up internet and find the club <laughs> and then and, and all that stuff back that's then in awesome. my day, not yours. Yeah, but, yeah. So yeah, and then when did you make that transition um, from more focusing on soccer to running? Yeah, so it was after my junior year that I completely quit soccer. And I kind of tried to quit the year before, but I really, really missed it. Yeah. And it was just running cross country for me was just not as fun. And so I just said, heck with it. I'm coming. I'm playing again. And then once it became, you know, reasonable to believe that I would get a full scholarship okay. for running. Yeah. I was like, all right, maybe not tear the ACL. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when I, I gave it up around that time because I had fully decided I would run in college and um, not play soccer and try to run. So. Yeah, that's a little much. Yeah, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just talking about, you know, transitioning to college. So um, what was the biggest difference for you in terms of going from high school to college? And then like, what did you learn from your college experience? So I would say the first biggest difference was just having people that could beat me around me all the time because in a small school and in single A Illinois, I was just kind of always able to win. So having people on my team that could kick my butt at practice and did kick my butt at practice was a transition, but I really liked it. Um, and then the miles, I did not run as much mileage and then I didn't have workouts where the rest would be so short. Like sometimes they would say a minute rest and I thought, this is insane. I can't <laughs> believe you want me to run again in a minute, you yeah. know? So that was a transition for me. Otherwise, the rest was pretty normal. I didn't really struggle with homesickness or anything okay. like that. Or I don't know, school wasn't that bad. Um, and then I would say the biggest thing I learned is just to roll with the punches. 
Like, because things just aren't going to go the way you expect. The best plan is no plan. Yeah, right. (laughs) But it's just like in high school, I feel like you don't have to, everything's a little more scheduled for you and Mm -hmm. it it just seemed to always work out the way it was supposed to. I mean, the worst thing that happened was I got bronchitis at state, but I still won. So, you know, that was like the big problem in high school. But then in college, it's just one thing you know, things come at you left and right in different directions. And you're the person troubleshooting at that point and managing yourself versus your parents. So I think just like rolling with the punches and learning that things aren't always going to go your way, but you just had to keep going forward no matter what. And then you had some great success in college, but can you think of a moment when you realized that you could do this professionally or at, um, you know, the next level? Yeah, so it was kind of crazy because on my recruiting visit, my coach in college was talking about how old I would be at Olympic trials. And I just, it just really didn't click with me that I was like that good. And then my freshman year, when I became All American in indoors, I got six, I realized, oh, I'm like, this is the top of the country yeah. already. <laughs> and I just got here. So then I started to think of myself a little bit differently, which was like a really good positive because I took it more seriously. Yeah. That was but a lot of pressure, I bet. Though. The pressure because I was so young and I just don't, I just didn't realize like that part of my strength was just being a silly, dumb freshman that didn't know what was going yeah. on and just ran hard. So yeah, th- I made my own mistakes, but it was probably pretty early in college that I thought, okay, I'm going to keep doing this after, after college. That's exciting. And like professional running sounds like a dream, right? To someone that doesn't (laughs) know the ins and outs, but there's a lot more that goes into it, right? So like, what's the difference from, you know, professional running from just, from just running in college, you know? Uh, college is so much more fun. (laughs) That's the first (laughs) difference. You don't realize it until maybe, well, for me, it took like probably a little bit longer because I stayed in Arkansas for a year and a half before I moved to like another place to run. And I think the second biggest difference is just that it's just like, stressful um to think of it as your job instead of like you're in college you're always thinking about your team and your points and what events you're gonna run and then all of a sudden it's your job and you're thinking about yeah you're thinking about like this different stuff like what meets can I get into are they gonna let me into this race like that stuff's just a little bit more hectic and then if you do have an agent you know, contacting them and them figuring out your schedule and getting everyone to work together. Or if you're doing it yourself, that's a lot of planning, yeah. like travel and money management and all that stuff. So it just depends on everyone's situation as far as pro running goes. And I've even been in different situations mm-hmm. depending on like where I was living. But I would say just it's not as much fun as the biggest difference mm-hmm. as far as like the team goes. It's, yeah. you know, that. It's less team of a as- team aspect. Yeah, and I know people go to... You can get to- that in certain situations. Sort but- of, but it's still not... The- I don't know. Yeah. It's not the same, <laughs> so you know? Is there like a... Well, how do you continue to make it feel enjoyable, though, when it starts to become or feel more like your job? Right. I think that if you actually like love running, mm-hmm. it's a lot easier or love competing. I think that's like the two categories, right? So you just, you're always thinking about that next race, like wanting to get that PR, run a little faster, or you just love going out for a run every day and that, you know, and pushing yourself, whether you're running a race or not. So I think those are like the enjoyable parts uh-huh. of it. It just come race day, you know, you're, you're all about you. So it's kind of, it sounds like really cool, but it's also like really selfish, right? Because you're like, okay, I care just about me. Whereas when I was in college, it was like, all right, the team's on the line. I got to put these points up on the board, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. So, um, I don't know. I think everybody deals with it a little different, but I just genuinely love running and competing. So, (laughs) and then, you know, besides racing fast on the track, uh, you also do some road races. Oh, yeah. Um, so do you have a favorite road race that you like to run in or any unique ones that you've competed in? Unique road races. I 
what's I have been in some unique ones. There's yeah. like the Bix. Um, I I've done that. It's a seven mile race, but I've also done the 400 meter uphill sprint, which is a road race that in the Quad exciting. Cities. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, Lucas Hofer actually yeah. has run it too. So, but. And then I really like four mile road races. Okay. I don't know what it is. That four mile distance for me, I just really enjoy it. Everyone would think I like the mile road race, but it's a little too crazy. I just, I do not love that type of road race. And I was really bad at it originally, even though I was good at running the mile on the track, I would go on the road and I just, I couldn't function or something. So it took me like I, three years. It would be years. hard to like gauge how far you're in. You yeah know, to that mile just like because the laughs you know you got like that third lap mm -hmm. everybody talks about in the mile and that last lap right and that you know that first lap just getting out but then once you're just on a sh especially if it's like a straightaway oh it would yeah be just so hard yeah i don't even know how i'd pace myself besides just going with everybody yeah all plans out the door like all <laughs> tactics boom gone like does not matter you know if and it's really cool to see that too. Not yeah. necessarily the best person as far as fitness on the track goes will win the mile yeah. on the road. Yeah, so, usually it's get some interesting results on the like, road. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it does look like you're really close to the finish line. For sure. For a long time. It's like 600 meters away looks like maybe 300. Yeah. And so that, but it's double. So it's kind For of a sure. weird like mental game out there yeah and then what would you say um you know you've it's it's not always like from point a to point b especially you know, running in general but especially professional running so like where d have you felt like at your highest or lowest points in your career so far so directly out of college i ran super well and getting the nike contract and then even though it was super small and I didn't really think of it that way. I just saw myself in a different light. Mm -hmm. Like I belong in these pro races now. And I started running really well. I dropped four seconds that year in my 1500, which was super cool. And then, you know, injuries, moving, all that stuff was kind of hard. But the lowest would definitely be like I herniated a disc in my back and had to have back surgery. Um, but what was the lowest part about that was probably that I was so upset before it, I even hurt myself. And that was just because I was identifying so much in the running world. Yeah. I just had my best season of my life and then I didn't get sponsored. So then my value as a person, like I really thought, like, what am I doing this for? I, no one cares. Like, I'm not even, you know, financially stable now, you know, season's over. I can't make money. I got to work full time. No one else that's running my times do. I felt really a lot of pity on myself, which is kind of a shame. Um, and then when I started training again for the next season, I just went overboard because I, I turned it around, you know, out of this like depression I was in, it, I turned it around, but I trained really hard for like yeah. two weeks and then just was overdoing it in the gym and the miles and working full time that I herniated that disc. And then it led me on like a pretty long path to getting back surgery and then coming back. And I feel like it's been a lot longer of a journey than I expected. But so, but I'm at least now I feel like happier as a person yeah. overall than I was even after my best season of my life, which is crazy to me to think of, you know? So. Yeah. That, that sounds tough. I can't imagine. <laughs> it's not fun. Yeah. Especially when you, you know, yeah, the, you love like running. The stakes are just, you know, can feel so much higher. But I mean, it seems like you're at a better place now. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was honestly like what's crazy about it. And when I really pr put it in perspective is I don't think like I would have ended up with Trey had I been healthy, which is like kind of weird to say, but I just don't think that I would have taken the time yeah. to get to know him or had the time, you know, or been in a space where I, yeah. you know, like I kind of needed help and he was there for me. And so it was just kind of a weird, like, that's how I ended up yeah. with my husband. So I really don't know if it, I would change it Which necessarily. Your husband is the coach of yes, Western yes. Illinois for people that <laughs> do not know. <laughs> yeah. My husband, Trey coaches at Western Illinois university. Yeah. So, well, I mean, thanks for sharing. That's not some, that's not something easy to share, you know, 
Um, but it's awesome that you're open about it. And, you know, like for younger runners, um, you know, it can seem so simple sometimes, mm-hmm. but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. Um, not ju- I mean, for runners in general, and that's kind of the point of this podcast is like just get to know um, the people that come on here and, you know, what their passions are in life and then also like, you know, how they feel about their running or how they're dealing with feeling about their running. So um, it's great to hear that. Um, do you have any advice for younger runners then just to, you know, put a bow on oh, this portion gosh. of the podcast? Um, I guess like just take it in stride. That sounds really corny, but like I said before, my you know, what I learned in college, like things just don't go the way you expect, but really it's such a gift that we're able to run and like your gifts have been given to you and that you, you know, you can never have this time back. So yeah. there's no point in over stressing out yourself or, I mean, it seems know. like you've made the most of your gifts. Yeah. I'm trying, you know, and doing my best. To. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah, it's hard. It can be hard and challenging. And sometimes you'll wonder why am I doing this? But really, if you just take a step back and think like, if you love what you're doing, then it's totally worth it. For so. sure. All right. So changing gears now for the last portion of this interview, um, I'm going to start the rapid refresh segment, All which right. is a segment where I ask my <laughs> guests too many <laughs> questions for them to answer in a timely manner. Um, first, uh, what would be a dream sponsor for, sponsor for you? Oh my gosh. I know I should say something like really awesome. Like <laughs> I'm addicted to perk coffee here in Macomb right now. Yeah. So hit me up. No, I, I know it's kind of, I would honestly be cool with like any shoe companies sponsoring me at this point if they wanted to, or just like, I don't know. I always thought what would be cool is State Farm Insurance Yeah. if they wanted to sponsor me. Why is me. that? <laughs> okay. So my mom works at State Farm and she, um, yeah, so she knows uh, the CEO of State Farm, my grandma, used to babysit them, him and his brother. Yeah. So, which is crazy, right? So, like, I've talked to him and... Um, you know, like a good neighbor, if they could be there, you know, my, we were there for them. Uh If they could be there for me, (laughs) that'd be awesome. But I just always thought it'd be funny if I had like, you know, state farm. Well, my answer (laughs) would be like some peanut butter company. I don't know. I just love peanut butter. (laughs) There's too much food that I like to (laughs) even like go down that path. I guess I said perk coffee. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. And then I mentioned your nickname before. Um, Where did you get the nickname Purple? Okay, so my last name originally was Brown. We said Brokaw, but Stephanie Brown. Um, and back in my day in college, there wasn't Instagram and Twitter yet. Mm-hmm. I think Twitter was just getting going in like 2012, right? 2011. Yeah. I don't know. 2008. That time or At frame, least it wasn't popular. It was very new, right? Yeah. So we all had Facebook and we would, that's how we communicated. Like we were playing Farmville on Facebook and everything. But some of the Sprinter girls had like middle names that were really funny on Facebook. Yeah. And so I took it upon myself to make my middle name purple because theirs were like, I remember one was like Boss Hog and Track Star wow. and like Big Money. Like it was just like really funny yeah. middle names. It was almost like people's handle. And so I made mine purple because it's my favorite color, purple brown. And then I dyed my hair purple at one point. And yeah. then it just, just it was just perps, you. purple. Like that is kind of like my alter ego when okay. I race is like people are just like, let's go perps. And it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I just love it. And it's funny now we're at Western because like that's one of the cheers is go, go purple. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> Everyone's cheering for me. <laughs> All right. So next, if you won $10 million, what would you spend it on tomorrow? I had to spend it in one day or what, like, what's your big first purchase? Uh, even better camera. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, that new cars because our cars are a little old. Yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, professional running doesn't make a bunch of money for everybody. (laughs) So Yeah. yeah, probably new cars and I don't know, just, yeah, that would probably be it. Maybe a new roof. 
<laughs> so <laughs> adult things. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, that's practical. I'd probably do a lot of the same. Yeah. Um, what's a pet peeve of yours? When people chew loudly or yeah yeah like I cannot and I hate when we have guests that do it because mm-hmm. I have to be polite and I I want to say like hey chew quieter <laughs> but then also b- loud breathers like when I when I'm sleeping or at a meet and things are loud because they just put you with roommates like mm-hmm. you don't get a pick and so I just hate we, uh, breathers. So like me and my friend, we call them oh, breathers. <laughs> of course, everyone breathes, but try yeah. to breathe quietly, you know. Um, so what are your thoughts on music during workouts, especially <laughs> AirPods? <laughs> okay, here's a story. I Logan was doing wearing... This is like the first time I remember meeting you. <laughs> you were so mad at me too. And I'm like, I come in a little hot sometimes, but you were wearing them during a track workout. Yeah, which and so, I haven't done since, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know why I was. You're just, I don't know, coming from soccer in yeah. and out. And I was like, hey, Logan why are you listening to music right now like no yeah um, and i i honestly think like for tempos and long runs i'm more power to you because that is a lot to go you know it's yeah. a different space Keeps especially you you're potentially going to end up in no man's land you know and so it is kind of hard but during the on the track i just like think on the track with the team yeah, yeah you're with the team and also you're not gonna necessarily have music in your race True. so it's just like good practice i actually think though if you were on the track by yourself doing a workout in this i would understand yes. like completely but with the team <laughs> i'm like all right fair enough put your pod down it, I, get it. <laughs> I just remember you taking it out and looking at it and setting it down like <laughs> wow i hate this girl <laughs> yeah <laughs> Still do. (laughs) All right. So who is your favorite competitor on the track or on the roads at the moment? My like that I like to watch or my my best that you like or my friend. Your friend. Okay, the first what's funny is the first person I thought of was Emily Lapari. Which I should not. She's the one that outkicked me when I was second in nationals and indoors in the mile. But I just like her energy and her vibe. We've known each other for so long, too, since high school. Um, but I really like her. And then, oh, I don't know. Otherwise, to cheer for. I, I just like love tracks. So there's I'm like so cr- many yeah. people that I would be like yeah. really happy for to I'm run. I'm currently well. a big Eric Holt guy. I just oh, like yeah. that. He's, he's from a mid-major. and He's so like goofy and he's just like li- loving it. Yeah. I loved his interview after that race in New York. And he's not like your typical type of runner. He doesn't look like, you know, your typical right. fat, really fast, world-class runner. And like, I mean, even as a little different kind of stride or with his right. arms you know yeah it's a little different it's so interesting too that's one thing like running the 1500 fitness of course is important but there's also like being able to grind uh-huh. is important you need a little bit of luck getting yourself yeah. in the right spot at the right time so there's so many aspects that go into it that that's why we run the race you know sure. it's not necessarily always gonna be what you think you know yeah. So what is something that people tend to misunderstand about you? I think people think I'm like (laughs) really tough, (laughs) but I'm like a super sensitive person. So, but I do kind of come, I'm pretty straightforward. So I think people assume that I like nothing gets to me Yeah, or I don't like People probably think that about, you know, a lot of runners or you know, top athletes, but like, I mean, we're all people. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day. I can take some jokes, but after a while I'll be like, okay, it's enough. (laughs) (laughs) Like I can't take it anymore. Or I'm like looking for affirmation in like, even in my running or what I'm doing, like I'm just a sensitive person, but I don't really come across as one. I come across fairly aggressive and like whatever, but I really do care about what people think. And like, not trying to upset people and yeah. stuff like that. So it can be tough. Yeah. To do both, you know? <laughs> yeah. So lastly, um, what are three shows or movies that you'd recommend to listeners? Anything recent right. or anything, anything. 
Uh, so I really love Friends. Big Friends fan. Sorry for those of you that aren't, but I just like think everybody should watch Friends because it's so funny. Um, and there's a lot of references. Yeah. Once if you're a Friends person, you always can reference almost any situation back to Friends. So and then movie I like for like young chick flicks. I like Thirteen Going on Thirty. I don't know why. I just loved that movie when I was younger and I've always loved it. And then the movie, any like Mark Wahlberg movie is like funny. I like the movie Two Guns. I think it's funny yeah. and intense. And Have you I ever know. seen The Departed? No. Okay. Is he in he, it? He's in it. All he's right. He's acting out. Yeah. Is it new? Uh, no, it's like five maybe five years ago now okay but yeah it's pretty good well we didn't have a tv yeah so in akron and then which is where we came from but we also don't watch a lot of tv yeah so <laughs> well i do yeah right <laughs> i used to watch more but yeah. i also would recommend um beat bobby flay that's in fourth sorry oh yeah <laughs> that's fun oh i love those cooking shows yeah they're beat so bobby good <laughs> that's the best one have you seen it I've seen it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, my recommendations. I recently just watched Mamma Mia. Um, big fan of Breaking Bad. And I like like thrillers. Like okay. Shutter Island. Yeah. Or, I, you're like a classic. Big DiCaprio or like. You're a classic dude and I'm yeah. like classic. All right, chick flicks. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So. All right. So just as I do the outro, um, you can sign the table. All right. And then also... Um, you brought some things with you. Yeah, I heard we were bringing gifts now. Yeah. Maybe I so misunderstood. You, you already one up Hofer. I had to. He capped and he, hasn't brought anything yet. So we'll he see. said he was bringing a plant, but maybe he didn't. So I did bring a bib, a good one, a and Nationals what's that bib? bib. This is the 2014 Outdoor Track and Field Championship na Nationals bib. That's awesome. We have that one to add yeah. to the wall. And then I brought some nice coasters, as you can see here. If you're on the YouTube, but these are from our wedding. They're hand burned. So I made this awesome. design. Thank you. Yeah. So you can have a coaster set in here. Perfect. They're genuine. Genuine wood. <laughs> so. All right. So please leave a review if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and follow along for more running related content. You can follow me at Running Refresh on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, share it. Share it with your friends. Let everybody know about Miss Purple Brown <laughs> slash Brokaw. <laughs> right. um, again, how can they follow you on social media? Yeah, you said it. Miss Purple Brown on Instagram is my most used social media or Snapshot stuff. Okay. Those are the two options. <laughs> well, it's been awesome having you on. Thank you for being candid. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> <laughs>